So if you didn't know, in C-sharp, new lines and indents are actually completely optional. This means that this snippet of code can be written like this, like this, or even like this. Full disclosure, this game isn't technically actually made in one line of code. This is just because I'm using the Unity game engine, which I would guess would at least take some code to, you know, work. But anyway, I needed to make a simple game for this because I knew it could get out of hand quickly. So I of course decided to remake Flappy Bird. Hello? Oi Nate, you can't just go stealing game ideas like that from random developers. Well, then what should I do? Oh, I don't know, just change a few things up to make it not so obvious. Um, okay, sure. So anyway, as I was saying, the game I'm going to make is called Flappy, and obviously this idea is mine, and I totally didn't take inspiration from other games. But after I figured out the game idea, I decided to get started. I began like I always do, which is of course to make a good color palette. I've done this two other times before, and I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Now, a color palette is cool, but if you don't actually use it for art, then it's kind of useless. So I used it to draw up these sprites in Illustrator. I'm not really a good artist, so I just kept it simple, and it doesn't look too bad. With all of the art finished, I figured it was time for me to start coding. So I made a new script, and then deleted all of the lines in Rider. But I noticed that after I started typing, Rider would automatically new line my code. This feature is definitely helpful, and intended just as long as you're not working on a project as dumb as this. There's probably a way to change this, but I didn't want to dig through all of Ryder's settings, so I decided to just switch to VS Code. The bad thing about VS Code is that I don't have it set up properly with Unity, so there are some small issues. But I'm kind of too lazy to fix it right now, so I just kind of pushed through it. When I got that all figured out, I decided to move on to the game loop. I started by programming the logic for the jumping, which just sets the player's Y velocity to a certain number. I then had to make the spikes that the player would jump through. And for this, instead of moving the player and the camera, I instead just moved the spikes. Each set of spikes is a prefab and then I have two of them in the scene. I then just have each set of spikes move left until it gets completely off the screen. Then when it's off the screen, I teleport it back to the original position and offset its Y position by a small amount. And of course, it all works really well. Now, because this whole game is on one line of code, which also means that every game object has the exact same script, this means that the script on the player has logic for the player and logic for the spikes, which is not very good because the player obviously is not a spike. So my workaround for this is every time I want to do something, I check the game object's tag. As an example, I'll first check if the game object's tag is player. If it is, then I'll check for input, and if there is input, then the player will jump. If it wasn't obvious, this is really inefficient, and if you're planning on doing this for a game, then, well, don't. On top of this, finding anything in your code or even changing something is such a pain because you have to scroll through this massive line of text. But um, yeah, you probably don't care, so back to the game. Next, I made some particles for when the player jumps because everyone knows that in real life when you jump, white circles come out of your feet. I then got started on player death. When we collide with something, I first check its tag. If it has the spikes tag, I wait a little bit and then reload the current scene. And if it has the instant kill tag, I reload the scene without any delay. I then added in some post-processing to hide my terrible art, which does does really make the game look a lot better. Finally, I had to make a score counter. For this, I just added in a collider between the two spikes. I then set its tag to score, and then in my script, I checked if we were colliding with that score tag. I then would simply update this text. And with that, I didn't want to add any more features, so I was done. The game doesn't have any menus or sounds or anything, so you currently can't play the game, but maybe that'll change in the future. If you haven't already, join my Discord server, and make sure to follow my Twitter. And thank you to SpaceBy and Pludgy for boosting my Discord server multiple times. And yeah, hit like if you like like, also like if you dislike, and please subscribe. And have a great day!